So hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker and first things first I got a cool new microphone system so hopefully it does improve the sound uh, in the garage a little bit. Um, I, I wanted one of these for a while so I can actually kind of work and talk while recording myself a little bit easier. Um, today we're going to be talking about something which I know is going to make some people mad at me um, as, as discussing um, the use case of electric bikes years ago uh, also got me in a little bit of trouble with some people, but you know I feel like these are important topics. I care about them <laughs> And judging by the amount of people that made angry the last time uh, other people care about them, too So yeah without further ado, let's talk about the Kawasaki What's it the, the hybrid 7? Apologies. I nearly had it. It's the ninja 7 hybrid um, and yes, I know the shadows, I need another set of lights for over there. It's uh, I'm not a professional, okay? Uh, <laughs> but the Ninja 7 Hybrid from Kawasaki, and without getting, getting into specs, because for instance, the, the battery alone weighs, I think like 13 kilos or 30 pounds, I think it was, something like that they specified. And it sits inside a specially designed trellis frame to protect it. Um, it's going to basically give you and I quote, 1000 cc uh, acceleration or style acceleration on a much smaller, uh, apparently less expensive bike than 1000 cc. Well, 1000 cc these days, I suppose. Um, that's with the power boost function. That's not all the time, and we'll get to that in a second. So the, the engine itself is a less than 500 cc twin. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of twins on the market. I think twins are great bikes, by the way, just to, to put, put that out there. Um, you know, parallel twins, inline twins, whatever you want to call them. Great engines. Um, I think I think the parallel twin, while a less exciting engine, uh, it's very functional, very usable, and anyone I know who has one uh, loves them. I personally, you can probably see it right there, the V-Strom. Um, I still love Vs. I just like the way they sound. But you know, that said, I think uh, I think parallel twins have made. Huge advances, and they're also great. As are inline fours, there's another inline four over there, and then there is a Boxer Six over there. So I like bikes and I like engines. Um, V4 being my favorite configuration, there's still a V4 Magna sitting at home in Ireland waiting for me to either get a green car or move home. And that's kind of the basis of where I'm approaching uh, this particular topic is. I love bikes and uh, I want to try all of the bikes. I have previously ridden um, electric bikes and I liked them. They were fun, but I haven't bought one and I wouldn't buy one right now anyway, because they're still too expensive for, for, for what you're getting. I mean, and I know one or two people who've had electric bikes, neither of them, have, neither of those people, neither, there's more than two. None of those people have held onto them for very long. Um, whatever that might say about the bike. So one or two people, you know, their lives changed um, over over the pandemic and it, the bike no longer made sense to them. And other ones just, they just weren't getting a, a, along with it as well as they thought they would. So, I mean, fair enough, doesn't work for you, change it up. Um, and that's kind of why I never bought one, you know? Everything I do is kind of, uh, it's not everything. Obviously there's some, there's some heart involved in, in the bike side of things, but everything else is based on mats. For instance, the four wheel vehicle I own and drive uh, in the cold weather is a 1999 Chevrolet Suburban. Now that thing absolutely like destroys fuel. It, it, it doesn't even burn it, it just chucks it out everywhere it can, is how I picture it anyway. And the reason I still have that is mats. Over the next three to five years, that Suburban is going to cost me less, even with the maintenance, which I do myself, than you know going and spending 15, 16, 17, 18,000 on a newer vehicle that will do the same thing. And actually a lot of them will have less space than that. So, you know, that's uh, where might these considerations come from. And, and again, this whole video, it's, and, and speaking to, uh, by the way, it kind of triggered in my brain. I was speaking to, to John, uh, what's he called at the moment? The Chronicles of Flinch Motor Vlogs. It's what I remember his channel's channel being called a long time ago. I'm not sure what he's going by now. The Flinch or the old man Flinch Motor Vlogs, whatever he's changed it to. I love how he changes his name. Um, <laughs> but essentially, talking to him kind of triggered it in my mind is again, 
who is this for? You know, and that, 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 I think that's a very important question. Um, because, you know, manufacturers, they go and they kill off certain bikes and they kill off certain ideas for, for these ideas. And if this is driven by purely government policies that manufacturers have to meet a certain emissions criteria or whatever else, or have to have a certain amount of hybrids as part of their lineup, which is a real thing with car manufacturers, by the way. I'm not sure if it applies to motorcycles. I think it's absolute nonsense if it is the case. And I suppose why I say this is again, and I want to read this actually, because I pulled it up earlier and I screenshotted it. Uh, I didn't need to screenshot it, I could have just loaded it again, but I wanted to read this. So the world's first strong hybrid motorcycle offers riders a number of new riding experiences. A mid-size package with the ex instant acceleration of a 1000cc class super sport model from a standing start with e-boost in brackets. Very important, you have to have e-boost on. It does not work with just the engine, obviously. Fuel economy on par with the 250cc class, we'll come back to that. And a button shift sport riding. <laughs> that sounds horrendous. So it's an automatic with button shift. Um, it can accelerate good like an electric bike, but only sometimes when you press e-boost. And it uses about as much fuel as a 250cc, but it's heavier. It will probably handle worse. Well, there's no probably about it, it's gonna be heavier. With three dr different drive, I can't read, <laughs> drive modes, each offering a distinct riding character and numerous innovative features for riders to explore, the Ninja 7 Hybrid truly changes the game, ushering in a new era in riding experience. Um, a new experience for who? I don't know who wants one of these. Now, not to come off as Captain Luddite, so uh, Grant of Grant Carroll Photography doesn't abuse me, um, but I really don't get it. I don't. And I hate to sound like, you know, the, the grumpy old, that was my knee that cracked if you heard that. <laughs> I hate to be the, the grumpy old man back in my day thing. But, so it sometimes can do fast acceleration, but realistically you're never gonna press that button, the e-boost button. I, I would think most people won't. Uh, what's it for? You know, who, like a 250cc bike, and I'm gonna rate everything against the 250cc bike right now. Will out accelerate most traffic from a standing stop? A standing stop? Is that the correct terminology? I don't know. It will out accelerate most people from a standing start. Standing start. <laughs> a standing stop kind of makes sense too. Anyway, because cars and whatnot are heavy. Very few vehicles will out accelerate a 250cc with a good rider on the back of them. And it will match a 250cc bike for fuel consumption, but a 250cc can do, can do that too. And they're a lot cheaper. Again, we'll come back to that in a second. And you have a battery that we know have issues in, with fires on a bike. Not something I would personally want, and it was one massive thing that turned me off electric bikes a little bit. Plus, it started happening, you know, there's one track in, in the UK that banned electric vehicles from track days. And honestly, I get it. It's, it's, it's a lot of money to, to, to look after those those fires, they're very hard to put out, almost impossible to put out in some cases, um, if they if they take off. So I get it, you know, I, I feel bad for people who have electric vehicles and enjoy taking them to the, to the track. Everyone's, if someone really loves their electric bike, good on them. I have nothing against that, and nor would I have any, a, a, a thing against someone with a hybrid. It's just the use case, I, I really, <laughs> I don't get it. And that's why I'm making this video. Maybe some people can explain to me in the comments make a response video, whatever you might want to do. I don't get it. Um, you know, so it can do, I think, between seven and 12 miles on the hybrid power alone. If you're commuting in a city, maybe that makes sense. You know, maybe if you're, no, I still don't get it. Like, <laughs> and yes, I'm arguing with myself, I realize that. But if I lived in a city and I wanted a bike that could get me around, I would just buy a Honda CRF 300L or something, or the, two, the 250L, I'd buy a used one or that new GB350 that they have. I saw that they had it in Australia today and it really annoyed me because it's not over here. But again, over here, I, I don't live in a city, so I, don't, I wouldn't use one anyway. Or, alternatively, you could save a huge chunk of the, the upfront cost price and buy a CB750 Nighthawk like I have over there and put you know the extra $15,000 that you have spare because you didn't buy a hybrid bike, which is gonna be expensive. 
and just maintain it for, for years and years. You could get the thing rebuilt and it will run forever. Or you could buy a 2019 Z900RS for a fraction of the price and it will run forever. And the thing about bikes, and this is why I don't understand the use case, they're already pretty good on fuel. Even a bike that's bad on fuel is, is good on fuel in comparison, you know what I mean? I don't think anyone's gonna go buy a hybrid bike specifically because it does 60 miles per gallon over 45 miles per gallon. I know I wouldn't. I know I'd much sooner have my V-Strom with cases and 1000cc twin acceleration all of the time. <laughs> I just don't get it. And the other thing, and I'll put a photo on screen, but I want to look at this again, just what I'm looking at it is, and I love Kawasaki. I've always liked Kawasaki, and I, this, I should have said this up front, this is not a dig at Kawasaki. Uh, I, love what, I love that they built the H2, I love that they've always built kind of wild and wonderful bikes, and I love that they push the envelope that way. I Like, props to Kawasaki for making the hybrid. And if I got a chance to ride it, I would absolutely ride it in my change my mind. If I ever get the opportunity, I will do that and I will make a video. But because of the design of the bike to, to, I assume, accommodate all the electrical stuff, and I'm not trying to be unkind when I say this, but the seat and position and whatnot, it kind of reminds me of a maxi scooter. And I don't like that. Um, you know, at least the, the like electric bikes from Zero and whatnot and, and, and Energica, I think they're actually pretty good looking bikes. Um, Again, I, I wouldn't buy one, they're just really expensive right now, and maybe they always will be really expensive in comparison to the bikes that I like to buy. But I just, I don't think the Ninja 7 Hybrid is pretty. I don't, I don't. And I don't know who it's for. And I don't know why it's come about. I just don't get it. You know, if you compare bikes to cars, hybrid cars make sense. Cars are largely miserable these days. No one really enjoys driving them anymore. I assume that's why people spend so much time on their phones. It's become like a, an entertainment center on wheels, you know, to get from A to B. Most people don't like driving. I actually quite enjoy driving my old 1999 Suburban because you're engaged with driving it. It's not the best driving thing on the road, but I kind of like that. Um, bikes are engaging. So why would you take away from some of that experience by installing, you know, button shifters and whatnot and, and putting, putting in like an electric mod? I, I don't get it. I assume it's going to have to be some form of like CVT um, transmission system as well to make it work with the hybrid because that's what, what happens. Hybrids, you can't have a, an actual manual hybrid because you need that, that partnership between the actual engine and the, 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 not the actual engine, the internal combustion engine and the electric motor, which is also sort of an engine. So, I mean, I don't want to say actual engine. I know some people will probably get upset about that, but it's true. There's going to have to be some weird transmission system, which again loses your feel, which it loses engagement, which I just don't understand. I just don't get it. And that kind of bothers me because usually when you look at bikes, even bikes I don't like, even bikes I don't want, I see them and I think, that's a cool bike. Someone will enjoy that. I look at the Ninja 7 Hybrid and I, I don't get it. I don't know who it's for. I don't know why. It's kind of like the Nikon, when Yamaha released the Nikon, you know, the, the, the two wheels on the front. I knew someone would buy that, I knew someone would enjoy it, but I guarantee you there's not many people who are keeping them. Um, keeping them and enjoying them. Collectors will buy them. Collectors will buy a Ninja 7 Hybrid because I don't think we'll see them around in 10 years. At least I hope we don't. I hope that it doesn't become regulations pushing companies to put hybrids, to make motorcycles hybrids because it'll take away from the enjoyment of motorcycles and motorcycles have a lot of drawbacks. If it's a case that they're pushed towards hybrids, a lot of those drawbacks will become more obvious. And a lot of the pros you get from being on a motorcycle, being engaged with a motorcycle, enjoying a motorcycle will probably disappear. I already think a lot of new motorcycles have too much technology and take away from the riding experience a bit, but that's another video, which I will be making soon. Yeah. As always though, um, my mind is very open to to be changed by, 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 by arguments. I could be completely wrong here. I could be looking at this from the wrong angle. And if I am, please do leave that in the comments. I, I would love to have a discussion about it. And yeah, that's kind of all I have. Um, I might revisit this video when I get like firm pricing details. I don't think they were on their website. I'll check. So I, I can only find on Bennett's, that's bennett's.co.uk. Um, 
good motorcycle website, by the way. They have it listed at £12,000, but everywhere else seems to be to be confirmed, especially in America. So £12,000, by the way, is a shed load of money for a essentially 451cc bike. Because, I mean, that's what it is. I still don't get it. I don't get it. Like, you look, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you could pretty much have, what, two CRF 300Ls for that? I know I'd take two, on, two CRF 300Ls before I'd buy one of those. And people have traveled around the world on the CRF 300L. I don't know could they do it on the hybrid. Prove me wrong, actually. Someone travel around the world on a Ninja 7 hybrid, please. That'd be really cool to watch. So uh, do that, prove me wrong, and then at the end be like, ha, you're stupid, Michael. I'd be okay with that, because it'd be a cool video. But yeah, hopefully this new mic worked. Hopefully this prompts some discussion. I'm actually really interested to know other people's thoughts and opinions on this. And yeah, until next time, thanks for watching. If you watched this far, I know it's probably longer than I meant it to be, as always. <laughs> a special thank you as always to all of my patrons. I uh, do really appreciate your support. Um, I didn't actually use patron money for this. I'm still saving that for other stuff, but I mean, the encouragement helped, so I appreciate it. And the support, obviously. And yeah, thanks again for watching. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments. Adios. Outro crew, watch this. So I'm gonna go off camera, and I'm gonna keep talking to this microphone, and it's really cool because I can be over here talking, and you can still hear me the way, like my lav mic would, but my lav mic was a pain in the keister to use. I don't wanna say game changing, but it's kind of game changing. Do you think it's cool? What do you think? Maybe I'll use this face for a thumbnail. Maybe, I, I, don't, I don't know. Who knows?